All right, guys, welcome back to another video. We have tons to talk about already today, and Gamescom Open Day Live is happening, so I'm sure there'll be lots to talk about tomorrow. So an extra video today with a bunch of news that is going on. We'll start off here with NVIDIA and Xbox. As we know, they now have integration. You're able to access your games that you own between PC Game Pass and NVIDIA GeForce Now, and if they're available via NVIDIA GeForce Now, you can stream them with your accounts, and now it looks like they are going to be adding some linking between the accounts, some automatic sign-ins so that you can play your games easier and faster. It says here, NVIDIA will soon let you link an Xbox account to its GeForce Now streaming service to enable automatic sign-in for supported games. This will be starting on August 22nd, so just in a couple of days here. The new account linking feature will mean you only need to sign in and link an Xbox profile once so that it's stored for all future GeForce Now sessions. Saying this new feature joins Xbox Game Library Sync on GeForce Now, which allows members to sync their supported Xbox Game Pass and Microsoft Store games to their cloud streaming library. So this is pretty awesome. I mean, this is all part of the rollout of Xbox games going into different streaming services, obviously with the whole Xbox Activision Blizzard acquisition games like Call of Duty. They had to make those deals to get their games onto other streaming platforms and linking it with GeForce now, I think, is a pretty smart idea as well. Just for people who have signed up to PC Game Pass, they want to keep that subscription service. But they also want to be able to use their NVIDIA GeForce now. Now it can all be linked together. So I thought that was pretty cool. It is starting and then if you do have both of them, you're going to be able to check out that integration, that instant sign in on August 22nd. Now, we did get an announcement for a new batch of Xbox Game Pass games. I like how they include the Call of Duty Black Ops 6 beta within this announcement, which is pretty funny. So we have four games here. And one of those games I've actually already been playing. I, I was able to get a review code for it, and it's actually a lot of fun from what I have been playing. That is Atlas Fallus Reign of the Sand. But here are the four games. So first of all, August 30th, the open beta for Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is here. You're going to be able to jump in, which is awesome to see because... This is something that we haven't seen in a few years where everybody's playing together at the same time, which is a nice thing. I, I was really annoying when they were breaking up the betas between PlayStation and then and the next week it was Xbox and PC. Now the whole Call of Duty community comes together, tries the open beta, all the feedback goes in at the same time. Everybody can talk about what they think about the game. That is coming August 30th. So just in 10 days from now. We've already seen lots of leaks for it. The Omni movement looks like it is going to be a nice addition and upgrade to the game, so I'm excited to try that out. I will definitely be jumping in on August 30th to play Call of Duty Black Ops 6. And then when the other games that are coming over, you have Atlas Fallen, like I said, that I've already been playing it. It's a fun action game. It's coming to Cloud PC and the Xbox Series X and S, an action RPG, and it's coming on August 22nd. Then you have Core Keeper coming August 27th, Cloud PC and the Xbox Series X and S. Don't know too much about this game, but it is a crafting and a building game. Then you have Star Trucker coming to Cloud Console and PC September 3rd. And this is a day one game. And basically, you are a trucker. You're hopping into the driver's seat, they say here, of your rocket-powered big rig as you haul, hargo, scavenge, or salvage, and interact with an elect eclectic cast of star hopping truckers in the American infused journey on the ultimate open road. So day one game, I don't know anything about it. And I'm sure that there are some people that love those styles of games that will be checking that out. So there it is four games announced here, not a big release, but I mean, we are getting Gamescom. There could be some more surprises there. I feel like there will be in a few hours and it, there's going to be tons of stuff coming from now until the end of the year. But even with Atlas Fallen and just being able to play the Call of Duty Black Ops beta, stuff to look forward to and play. Now, when it comes to uh, NVIDIA, we'll go back and talk about them for a couple of things here, actually. First of all, they're quietly launching a new RTX 4070. There's no big press release or anything that I've seen about this, but here it is. It says NVIDIA is announcing an updated RTX 47 with GDDR6 memory today. They say to improve supply and availability to meet strong demand, we're introducing the GeForce RTX 4070 with some extra fast GDDR6 memory. So if you look in upgrade and you're looking at the 4070, you might want to look at this new one here that they are putting out there if you were about to click buy on the older RTX 4070. And then we have this, and I think this is pretty cool. We are seeing some beautiful upgrades and, and differences 
with NVIDIA DLSS3 and ray tracing on a vow. NVIDIA GeForce, the, the YouTube channel here, they put out this video highlighting Avowed and basically just showing what the game would look like with RTX on versus RTX off. And there is a pretty big difference here. It looks phenomenal with all of these extra lighting effects and everything clearly brighter and more vibrant compared to when it's off where it is a little bit darker. So some cool stuff here. Avowed is going to look good. It's coming out as we know now. They pushed it to 2025 to get out of the, the crazy release schedule of the end of this year. That's going to get even bigger once we get the Indiana Jones release dates today. So I think that was a good move. I don't think it has anything to do with the game not being ready. But with these features here with ray tracing and stuff, game looks really, really good. I'm excited to jump into Avowed. It's one of my most anticipated games. And now it's going to be one of my most anticipated games in 2025 when it does officially launch. Now, if you're looking for some side-scrolling games, some fun Kong games, or at least looks fun, we did get this announcement here, which is pretty cool. And this is Kong Survivor Instinct. And they gave a cinematic trailer uh, for this game and announced that it will be coming out in 2024 on Xbox. Here is the, the and PlayStation as well. But here is the trailer for the game itself. And you can see the gameplay and everything for it. So hopefully this is actually a good Kong game. Because if you do remember Skull Island Rise of the Kong, it was the, one of the worst games to be released in 2023. This one looks pretty fun. I like these smaller side scrolling indie style of games especially if they have good gameplay and everything and this one looks like it could be pretty cool so look out for that it's a 2.5d platformer and they say that it is going to be coming to the xbox series x and s in fall 2024 as well as other platforms as you can see this is obviously a playstation trailer so it's coming there as well now, when we looking forward to Civilization 7, we know that a release date is coming. It looks like we now have that release date as it has been leaked here by Bill Bill Kuhn, uh, who is a pretty reliable leaker overall. And it looks like Civilization 7 will be releasing on February 11th, 2025. So another big 2025 release right around the release for Vout. So those another one that falls lining. Mean, the beginning of 2025 is looking stacked already with just those two. It says here the deluxe edition will give players five days of early access starting on February 6, 2025, and the game will retail for $70 for the standard edition and $100 for the deluxe. And on Nintendo Switch, both versions will be $10 cheaper, and you could assume why that is the case. It's obviously going to be the worst version if you're playing it on PC or console, the other consoles. But if you're playing it on the Nintendo Switch, yeah, you're probably not going to get the best performance and looks for the game, best graphics and everything like that. Okay, let's uh, quickly talk about this. We know the decisions of Xbox have been really putting off a lot of people, especially recently with the rumors of Indiana Jones, which we will hopefully get the confirmation today. I don't know if we'll get the PlayStation confirmation, but we'll get the uh, release date for it for Xbox and PC. And there's some executives here that are standing up for phil spencer which you've seen a lot of people actually go against him on the other side even in the business world but we have one here that is standing up for him and and i agree honestly and this is with larry herb i mean larry herb was a, it was the face of xbox major nelson as we all know him for years for so long he is not there anymore but he is actually responding here to rgt 85 on x and it's a very good response and it's just a basic response but you have him asking hey phil or xbox p3 what are we doing over there chief and he's running a business and that's the one thing i think a lot of people just forget when they look at video games the industry the companies everything like that they always look at it as how does it affect me how are they targeting me all of those things but the reality of the situation is they're running a business and if you look at the gaming industry today if you're just looking at it from the business perspective side of things, we've seen all the numbers of the growth of users on the different platform segments and consoles, very slow growth. And the only way that these companies are going to be able to continue to grow and expand and make more games, spend all that money in the games that we do love is to reach more gamers. And Xbox is at the forefront of that by putting their games 
on PlayStation, been putting their games on PC for years now, opening up their ecosystem with cloud gaming so you can play on any device. And I think it is paying off very well for them. And I think it will continue to pay off in the future. So if you are on the Xbox platform, you're going to get more content. You're going to get more games. You're really not going to have to go anywhere else to play your games because there's going to be so much stuff there. And that is the long-term vision, I would assume here from Phil Spencer and the Xbox executives looking at how the landscape of the gaming industry is changing, knowing that PlayStation is going to be following in their footsteps, which they already have been. If you do track everything that has been going on, PlayStation has followed Xbox slowly, but they have been with their PlayStation Plus upgrades, with putting games on PC day and date. I mean, you have Concord coming out PC day and date, all of those things. So they're ahead of the game. And a lot of people don't realize that all they do is react and rage and all these things. But in a few years from now, we will continue to see this vision play out. And I think it's going to end up being good for gamers who are going to be able to play their games anywhere they want. And then if you're on Xbox, in game pass if you buy one of their consoles which they will have for the next generation you're going to have just an insane selection of games which even right now we already do have and then finally let's we got to talk about this because this is pretty crazy but there is a lot of i would say nuance here that nobody is talking about and that is black myth wukong huge game and we're looking at the numbers here we have this tweet here. Black Myth Wukong reaches over 2 million concurrent players on Steam. Top three highest player counts for any game ever. And they also, I believe it has passed Pal World for the top game. You can see it here. Black Myth Wukong has dethroned Pal World in less than a year with over 2.1 million concurrent players on Steam. Highest player count over a single player game. Second highest player count of all time. So it's huge. The game is massive. It is doing insane numbers. A lot of people are saying it's because they rejected companies like Sweet Baby Inc. And their activism that they put within games, which I'm all for. I don't want activism within games. I just want a game that tells a story that the creators want to tell and there isn't any forced things in there that take away from the experience. We've seen how that has affected the games in the industry. But I'm also objective when I do try to look at these things. And one of the major things why Black Myth Wukong is doing so well is because it is a game released in China and they are going super hard on pushing this game marketing and everything and everyone over there is playing it. We know how many people live there and it has had a huge effect. We have this here from Simon Carless who is the founder of Game Discover Co, a board of Game History Org, and he puts this out. Now, this is an analysis here, and I think it just makes a ton of sense as to why these numbers have skyrocketed. A lot of people are, are asking that question, like, how did it get so big so fast? And it is because of China. He says here, how China-specific is interest in Black Myth Wukong? A lot. Game Discover Co's current estimate of its Steam country split for players is 88.1% China 3% US, 1.6% Hong Kong, and 1% Japan. So the reason why it is so big right now, so fast, I mean, this game had a lot of hype. It was going to do well either way, but why it's so big so fast is because China has heavily pushed this game to their people, heavily marketed the game, and it's a huge base of people that have gone in and or owning it and playing and they have steam they also have a wii game which is only in china which we don't know the numbers of that i don't believe which would make it even bigger this is massive and it's also a game backed by tencent which is a huge company over there and this is where you see things in the industry and evolving and you, you see xbox and when they say things like our competition isn't playstation anymore it is companies like tencent stuff like this is why i mean tencent has huge influence on how well games can do just be simply because of when they release games like this in the region they're located, it does insane. So we'll continue to see how Black Myth Wukong does. Uh, I'm sure it will continue to well. I'm sure it will end up selling well in the West too. But one of the, the biggest reason I would say why it's blown up so fast is because of China. But I'm going to end the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.